this is a very interesting edge class especially with the big 10 and the uh pack 12 not having a season but uh i'm steve lardell better known as what's crack lacking it's your boy bro Shmo. just in case you did not know so go ahead become a bro and subscribe leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content got plenty of videos pumping out this week so go ahead feast on the knowledge if you want i'm gonna give you my top 10 here y'all already know this and then you can go see my expanded rankings on fan to fan network follow the uh, the link in the description or the pinned comment so let's go ahead and let's do the dang thing because this is a very very interesting edge class and it might surprise you who i have at number one now i got carlos basham jr at a wake forest that's right i moved him up sim simply because he's playing this year his, I mean, his, he's got a great combination of size and explosiveness, and that can get him to be a top 10 pick. What I do want to see is him deploy more pass rush moves because typically he doesn't really have a plan B if his bull rush, granted, it's one of the best bull rushes you'll see in all of college football, but if that doesn't work, he doesn't really have a plan B, and you could kind of see that through his consistency because he only had five or more pressures in five games last season. So, we could see maybe more pa uh, more of a toolbox and more consistency, consistency consistency words throughout the season then yeah this guy definitely could be number one which means yes at number two i have gregory russo at a do gotta love gotta love miami man represent but uh this guy he, he decided to opt out and being such a raw prospect a guy that's still learning the position because you didn't know um coming out of high school he actually played safety and wide receiver and uh they moved him defensive uh line and um yeah he's just raw dude he doesn't have a toolbox pass rush moves and he kind of uh you just you just can see it in his game where things do need to be touched upon but despite by all that, I mean, he managed to pump out, what, 15 and a half sacks based on his upside because he's got a freakish frame. He's got great length, uh, solid bend around the edge. I mean, put on 46 pass rushes last year. Uh, again, lacking the, the technique and the toolbox is a bit worrisome. And that's why you really wanted or what I, I really wanted to see him play this year. Some of uh, I know some of y'all probably think, you know, there's a guy that can play um, on the interior too. They could move him in there, but he doesn't really have the play strength for it. Keep in mind, coming in this year, he's just a redshirt sophomore, so he can still put on some more weight and maybe put on some more muscle, which means strength typically. And uh, I mean, he, they played him seventy. Uh, he played seventy four snaps in the A gap, so he does have experience. But you do if you if you're gonna do that. Or be able to do that you want to see more power to his game again the only reason i dropped him is because he was opting out and he's such a raw prospect next guy on my list chris rump the second out of duke this guy's a monster he put on 10 pounds in the offseason already he probably should put on maybe five or more if he wants to be considered a first round talent but the play on the field based on a very limited sample size he only had like 400 some snaps last year is pretty darn impressive because this guy he's got great length and he uses very low like he gets good low leverage and just pushes tackles back he's got an explosive first step very very quick and just some of the best hands you'll see in this class uh yeah 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 probably up there with quincy roche out of miami do you <laughs> gotta represent uh, but he rivaled uh, Chase Young in terms of pressure rate and win rate, which that says something. But he, he's got to put on the weight because he wasn't used in coverage at all much at Duke. So I don't want him moving off ball linebacker. He needs to stick at edge, so he needs to put on the weight. Xavier Thomas here currently <laughs> for now uh f4 for me he had a bit of a lackluster sophomore season but he was i mean i was coming off a very productive freshman year and part of that is because of the way he was used he was used a lot different in his sophomore season he played a bit out of position he played on the inside of the tackle because 
Clemson was running like this 3-1-7 where they put a lot of safeties and corners on the field. So it wasn't really, when you play on the interior like that, you're really not getting one-on-ones, which is where I think he would shine because physically and athletically, he's very, very gifted. And with, with that upside, he should be highly sought out. But the thing is, this offseason has been terrible for him. He, he had a bout with the corona, with the the Rona. Got to be careful, can't say word word. Uh, and strep throat landed him on, um, or at least limited him in off season workouts. And uh, when he re- was able to return, he came sporting some bad weight. And I mean that's to be expected because I mean uh, when you're sick, typically you can't really do nothing. So. That combined with he could potentially miss some games this year because of that. Ah, uh, it just leaves him kind of in limbo. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put him here as a second rounder, and we'll see. We'll see when the season starts. Before we get into the next entry, just want to address: I accidentally call Adrian Hutchinson, Adrian Hutcherson, like throughout the rest of this video. That's on me. Y'all know I suck at names at times, and yeah. That's my bad. I know I'd see it in the comment section, so I'm gonna just address it here first and foremost. Go ahead, enjoy the rest of this video. Adrian Hutcherson out of Michigan, right here. This guy, a lot of what he does typically translates very well to the NFL. The thing is, he's probably a 3-4 end in the NFL because this guy, he's not an edge rusher, he's an edge defender. He sets the edge, he um, controls the line of scrimmage. This guy's very powerful. And he, I mean, you could push offensive linemen back at will. Uh, the thing is, in the draft, that typically that doesn't, that's not highly sought out, you know. Uh, despite it translating well in the NFL, uh, there, when you're in the first round, you're looking for those edge guys that have, um, that have good burst and athleticism. He just simply doesn't have that. Still, should be a day two guy, regardless, because. He is very good at what he does. And then at six, Quitty Hay out of Michigan. The teammate of Hutcherson. After all I, all that I said about um, Hutcherson lacking the burst and athleticism, Hay has it. He has it. This dude explodes off the edge, just flies by ta- flies by or flies through tackles. Um, I mean, so much so, he was on Bruce Feldman's freak list. I mean, it, it's pretty some pretty absurd numbers that he's recorded of having if he could do that at a combine then i mean he could get drafted on upside alone upside and potential the thing is he does have a very limited toolbox of pass rush moves he needs to work on the technique so he is very much a raw prospect and i could definitely see him uh coming back for the 2021 season and i do believe he is eligible for it let me actually Take a quick gander at that. I know. I know my the next guy I have on my list is. I mean, dude, with that size, dude, that's just wild. Yeah, he will. Uh, he's a senior, but he'll probably. I think they're granting, um, all players this year that are unable or are unable to play because of the postponed seasons uh another year of eligibility so i could see him coming back but jason oa out of penn state this is a guy i definitely see coming back for the 2021 season he was kind of like he's got he, this dude's got a ton of upside he was used more as a rotation player last year but he was just as efficient as Yatir gross matos who went in the second round and he did it on 230 less snaps He's got more physical upside than Gross Matos, and I think he's a further along in his development. They say he can run a 4-3, which would be ridiculous, but I don't know about that. He does look fast on tape, though. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, without the season this year, I definitely see him coming back because he does have first-round potential. And then Patrick Jones the second out of Pittsburgh here. He's probably one of the safer prospects in this class. He's probably got one of the highest floors because he's got the ideal length and size he has multiple years of very good production but he does lack overall athleticism 
Guy's got some good hand placement. He's nice and strong. So, like I said, a very safe prospect. Then Quincy Roche. Finally, I mentioned him earlier, and he's making it on this list. This guy just has great hand usage. And, I mean, he's got a great set of pass rush moves. If you're not including the bull rush, because I have yet to see a bull rush on his tape, at least from Temple. Rumor is that he is at playing at 245 this year, which... I'll see it when I believe it. You know how sometimes uh, the college uh, websites they'll they'll uh, they won't tell you the truth about a uh, player's true size and weight. So we'll see, we'll see. But again, no power to this guy's game. He's nothing in. There's nothing to offer in run defense, and you we. I do want to. I need to see power to his game for Miami this year, especially now Russo gone. So he's kind of like the focal point on that line. So I I need to see that right now. Third round grade, and then my final guy here is Joshua Kando. Kando, <laughs> Kando, uh, out of Florida State. Florida State. Uh, well, actually, currently he can don't because he doesn't have a lot of production. Uh, all this is really just based on potential and upside because he's got all the traits of an elite pass rusher and if he could show that this year he could fly up boards but he hasn't played more than 389 snaps in a season that was that was last year his most uh snap total and he only has seven career sacks but he plays with very good leverage leverage despite being six seven very very strong I mean, all the physical tools are there. And if, you have, if he just has a banger of a season there at Florida State, again, a guy that can fly up boards. But that's it for the video. If you want to see the full list, it's on fan to fan Network. Again, it's in the description below. Or the pinned comment, whichever meets your fancy, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.